we were called in the morning at 6.30, a night sister or a night staff nurse would come along the corridor and bang in every door. And we would get up and bathe and dress in our uniform and dress our hair and scurry off down. It was very much like a boarding school, really. Scurry off down to the dining room and have as much as we could get on our plate of this <laughs> dreadful, dreadful stuff and eat it and get on the ward by 7.30. There we were, dressed in our uniforms, our hats on straight, hands behind our back, standing waiting to be given our work for the, that morning. And we worked from half past seven through until half past nine in the evening. Come four o'clock in the afternoon, all of my joints ached, my head ached, my legs ached, my feet felt like they felt like boils. And I'd look at the clock and think, gosh, I've got to stay upright until at least 8.30. Was there any movement among Irish nurses, among nurses in general, uh, towards improving the conditions that you describe? Amazing as it may sound, no. I have frequently asked myself, why not? But we always believed, we believed all along our training, that things would improve anyway. Um, the new Jerusalem, the new socialism, would improve everyone's lot. And we were in the main pretending we were young ladies, doing a very good job, as God would have liked us to have done it and he would in turn reward us with nice husbands. And it was an attitude of mind. Besides, we were so, in, we were so overworked that we hadn't time to really think about our own conditions. I never felt that, um, I never felt gratitude because I knew that they were using me. They were using my dedication to duty. They were using what I would euphemistically call my Christian charity. They were certainly using my, my labor. <laughs>